read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey lady listeners welcome welcome we have a brand new week with cc monroe she has brought us a book called the guy from that one summer I love it. And that cover is hot. It is hot. It's really hot. It is hot. so pretty. I am a sucker for gold. Like any sort of like soft, pretty gold. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I was like, uh, what is it? A uh, Niffler in a past life. That's like the animal in Harry Potter that's like always going around stealing all the jewelry and stuff and the gold. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was what I, maybe it's what I did once upon a time. So but yeah, Cece has brought us a brand new book, The Guy from That One Summer. We're going to tell you about it in just a little bit and all her good stuff that she's got for us this week. Um, but first, I wanted to say I'm going home on Wednesday. I go to my parents' house and I'm going to court because I'm getting adopted by my parents. Are you really? I am. I am. I asked my dad over Christmas um, when they were here for Christmas. It was like in January. Um, we did our family Christmas together and I asked my dad, I said, would you adopt me? And he got really emotional and it was so sweet. Like he just like his little chin trembled. It was so cute. And he was Aww. like, he was like, just tell me what I need to sign. And it was like the sweetest thing ever. That's, so, yeah. That's it, adorable. We've talked about yeah. it too. Once we mm -hmm. said, cause it'll just be, we have like guardianship over our, my niece. Mm-hmm. We've never really messed with it. We've done name change stuff, but it's not like hardcore custody strip. But now yeah. she's 16 and no judge has taken her. Yeah. But when she turns 18, <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> when she turns 18, mm -hmm. we are going to go ahead because then it's her choice. Yeah. Do yeah. the legal adoption. Because mm -hmm. technically, if something happened to me or mm -hmm. Rob, she yeah. would be treated differently in the That's course right. of those yeah. actions but yeah. if we adopt her which we'll do when she's 18 because mm -hmm. like i said it'll just be smoother yeah that she is completely the same as Peyton yeah when it comes yeah when you're underage anything. you have to get like parent permission from the biological parents it's yeah. such a nightmare but that's what they said about adult adoption it was a pretty easy process my parents had to be the one to initiate it and so they did it with their attorney in South Carolina. And so I have to go down on Wednesday and appear before a judge with my parents and agree to this and sign everything. But um, yeah, it was one of those things where it, I don't, I, I know a couple of reasons, but it was just really important to me. And I don't know why at 40 that that's still important to me, but it, it was. And so I thought, I told him, I said, if anything happens to my mom, I was like, I'm technically your stepdaughter and I don't want that. I was like, yeah. I don't, I said, you know, if my sister's not there, I'm the one that has to make some kind of medical decision. And I said, I don't know if I'll have the power to do that. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the case would be, you know, if, if something like that would happen. So, you know, it was just, I was, just, I did, the more I thought about it, the That's more I was like, yeah. Actually why we started this thing. Cause I had had the random thought in my head first of, what happens when Isabel turns 18 mm -hmm. and I no longer have guardianship papers? And if, what if something happened to her? Mm -hmm. I literally yeah. thought I, I might not have any control. Yeah. Or so like your ability like, to go into the hospital or go see yeah. her. So somebody or, yeah. was like, well, you can have her go mm -hmm. into the legal office and draw up papers that you're her mm -hmm. Conservatorship or whatever I don't yeah. know. I just called. And I was like, well, then what? Then they were like, why wouldn't we just do we this? Just do an adoption, yeah. and then yeah. that's done. Yeah. So it took a couple months to like you know get through the process of the paperwork. I got sent several things I had to sign and send back and do all this other stuff. And it does mean that um, any biological parent that you um, you give up any access to their estate or any. Um, I forget the terminology they use, but it's like, basically, you're not entitled to anything from that estate once your biological yeah. parents dies, like you give up everything. So you have no claim to any of their things or their like inheritance or any of that, like that's all son, said and done. And I was totally fine with that. So yeah, it wasn't, you know, a big deal. I don't know if like, at, at, as an adult adoption, I don't know if they notify the biological parent or not. I haven't heard if they did or they didn't. I don't know. But I know I get to go Wednesday and say hi to a judge. 
<coughs> which um, I know Kevin was like, just don't wear your ripped jeans. And I was like, oh, that cut deep. That motherfucker. <laughs> I, know. I, was like, I just fucking... got like so mad. I, know. I was like, you fucking asshole. And oh I was, my like, God. I got like, mad all over again when he I said it. I did too. Did you see my press my cheeks? Like, I know. So I was so pissed when he said it. I was like, that fucking dick. And I was like, you know what? It's just bullshit because did it. And he was like, here we go. I was like, you're the one that said it. <laughs> So, yeah, oh, but I'm, I'm super excited. It should be really cool. And I think it'll be really nice to just have that sort of buttoned up that that yeah. chapter of my life buttoned up. So because you never know so, what yeah. else you can it, it can go no. the opposite way where something yeah. happens to you and your husband and your mom is somewhere and yeah. he needs to get to your children or yeah. make a decision yeah. for you guys on the fly. He has yeah. that ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you just never know what the scenario is going to be, you, you know, never know. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It, that's been tough. But, you know, just going through the whole process was not difficult at all. It's mostly just an emotional thing, yeah. like going through it and realizing that, OK, like this is shit I want in place. Mm-hmm. You know, when as I get older and, you know, I want to make sure everybody's protected and taken care of. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm going to do it. I'll, I'll report back on the process and how everything went. But I'm really excited. At 40 years old, I'm getting adopted. <laughs> yes, I'm 12. And I'm 41 now. God, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, speaking of, you had a birthday coming up. Yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to do anything? You're usually like, no, oh, go out to dinner. Or, you know, are you going to do have anything? anything planned at the moment? No dinner, no nothing. This isn't a big birthday, though, is it? Are you 36, 37? I'm turning 38. Eight, aren't I? Oh my god, you were just a baby when we met. I don't know. I, don't know. I think I'm turning 38. No. I was born in 85. Shit, I don't know. You act like that means anything to me. I'd be like, she's 112. What? Well, sometimes <laughs> Isabel gets my age wrong. One time she had me convinced for like seven months I was like a year younger than I really was. No, that's nice. <laughs> and then she took it away. Oh, it's like you missed I'm a like, whole year. <laughs> I don't know. I have to do the math on that to figure out how old you are. But oh, I guess I'm turning 37. Okay, I, th- I thought you were 36 right now. Okay, okay. I'm turning 37. Yes, I'm uh, gonna tell. I'm gonna start telling everybody though I'm 40 though. I, I, you know, I did that early too because like, people, people are gonna be like, like oh my "You God. look so good." I know. <laughs> Like, you're 40? <laughs> you look so good. Just for the compliments. You know, feed the ego. That's all I need. Yeah. So um, my oldest one started back school last week, last Thursday and Friday. And, you know, the school she's going to doesn't have buses. So it's a long drive. It's nine miles away and it takes me about an hour. Whoa. Yeah. It's tough right now with traffic because there's no buses. There's no sort of system like that. The only thing they do is they have a parent carpool that you can join. And I just feel really strange about that. <laughs> so, I, cause I don't know who my kid would be riding with. I mean, I guess I could meet up with them, but it's still like, I don't think so anyways, but I have noticed that when we're in the car together, it's been really nice talking. Yeah. So, hanging out. I'm trying to focus on at least those moments instead of like the immediate road rage that I feel. Damn, an hour for nine miles? Well, it's because like I get all the way there and I get about a mile from the school and then we just stop. And then it's like you just go so slow to the front because it's only a little two lane road. The, yeah. the, you know, one side and the other side. And that's it. There's nowhere to pass and you just have to wait your turn. Yeah. So you're just waiting for everybody to go up and drop their kid off or pick their kid up and you do it twice a day. So they said it, you know, it will get better as the school year goes on and, and people figure out they have to carpool or whatever. So I remember that the elementary line was like, mm, oh, it was torture, but the it's like, it's, they get older, like the middle school line. Right. <laughs> they, parents know they're like, no, <laughs> no, let's quit now. fucking move, around. Move, move, move. Well, you know, I never had a problem with our elementary school. I will say our elementary had it down. This is middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. So the problem is, is that there's middle school in one building, high school in the other, and they both let out at the same time. They um, used to have it staggered, but I think the parents complained that like they would have a kid in middle school and a kid in high school 
but that couldn't drive. So they were like, I have to come an hour early to get one, wait an hour, get it, get the other one and leave. And like, I get it. That would have really pissed me off too. So both the schools release at the same time now. So not only are all the parents for the middle school and high school kids that can't drive picking them up, but all the high school kids that can drive are trying to get out. So mm -hmm. it's just fucking chaos. But you know, I, I'm hoping as the school year goes on, it'll get better. But again, like the, the car rides though have been pleasant, have been so nice. Like just, just sit and talk about stuff. And we started watching stranger things. I didn't know if I was going to let, you know, her watch it or not. But so I was like, let's watch the first season and see how you feel about it. So we went through and we watched it and she loved it, of course. And we watched season two and somebody dies in that one. And that one was really hard for her. She like got super sad and upset. She was like, I just didn't want him to die. I just really liked him so much. And Aww. I know it was really sweet. And like, I could tell that like, it really kind of hurt her heart a little bit. So we started season three, but um, we're going slow on this one. So, so I was like, all right, That's so let's so just weird. take our time. Yeah. Peyton and my mom are watching it. Like Peyton got home at like two in the morning the other day. My mom does not. Usually Peyton comes home around midnight if he's over there because that's when she goes yeah. to bed. Uh -huh. He came home at like two. He's like, we were watching Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, that's I'm cool. Like, he's watching oh. it too. Okay, nice. Does he like it? He says he does. So that's I good. guess they're staying all up. He went back the next morning. She loves it. She's like, their clothes and everything are awesome because it's all from like the 80s. Mm -hmm. It's all crazy. She's like, this looks so cool. So, and she likes one of the girls on there too, like this girl, Max, singing like the color Max. She's just like super cool. And she's like, I really like her. She doesn't die, does she? And I was like, um, <laughs> no, but she gets really injured. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, oh, how am I going to explain this to her? So we're just kind of taking it in strides this, this season. So, yeah, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, well, you're not doing anything for your birthday. Do you have anything coming up that you are excited about? I don't know I don't if you have any plans. You don't have. I thought you had a trip planned coming up. I don't think. You know, there is a trip on our calendar. I have on there, and I have no idea what that's for. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, she must have a big trip." Or no. I thought maybe it was for your birthday. No, uh, I was like, "What did I?" <laughs> had something in my mind I was going to do. And I remember staring at it. Yeah. I was like, what, what did I think I was going to do? <laughs> Who the hell do I think I am? <laughs> I'm traveling all over the place. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. I, I thought it was maybe something for your birthday. I was like, oh, well, maybe she just has it, something she's going to look forward to or no. no. I see all. that too. I was as puzzled as you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why did I put I that at, on where there? Where she thinks she going? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got the calendar blocked out for part of September because I'm going to Mexico. I'm really excited about that. It's LB's 40th birthday. Gotcha. And my 40th was in quarantine. So I didn't get to do wow. fucking shit. So we were like, you know what? Let's do this. So she invited a ton of friends and we're all going down. So, and it's Kevin's birthday the day after we leave because their birthdays are really close. Mm -hmm. And so we leave and the next day it's Kevin's birthday too. Yeah. So I know it'll be fun to like celebrate with everybody. And we have other friends that are coming down. So I don't know. It should just be a good time. We're just going to Cancun. We're going to, it's an all inclusive. We're just going to swim up to the bar and have some beverages and nachos. So sounds yeah. nice. Everybody yeah. Knows. I'm just looking forward to like just not having to take care of anything at home. <laughs> I want to get away from the heat. Can I go somewhere cold? Is there somewhere to cold to go? <laughs> not right now. No, nope. <laughs> not right now. But I don't know. Like I was, uh, I was thinking about it when we were at the beach and stuff. And I was like, oh, it'll be just like this, except I won't have to clean up the house after we leave. <laughs> <laughs> so that part will be nice. But anyways, let's talk about CC Monroe and all her good stuff. Okay. Um, I'll read you her author bio, and this is what's really cool. The first part of this, it says USA Today bestselling author. They, I think she just got that with Aww. Katie Robichaux. I think she just got that. Because nice. I remember seeing a video where it happened, and they were FaceTiming each other when she found out. And it was so sweet. She was so emotional and, like, just 
just it was it was a, you could tell it that was a big moment for her and it was really cool that she had it recorded that she could play that together and i did see the other day that katie robichaud had gone to her house and surprised her like flew to her house got That's in the awesome. back of her car like one of her friend one of their mutual friends that lives near cc got like drove and like put put katie in the in the trunk and like cc went to back and popped it and then katie roby show just like leapt out at her like, can you imagine no that was so funny it was it, it was the cutest go watch it on tiktok it was the cutest no. i only have that one time i was sitting at a table for my birthday they dragged me out to a barbecue yes. place i didn't want to go to and i'm sitting mm -hmm. there at this table and all of a sudden jeanette sets down next to me yeah she's like i got you this drink and i was like where the fuck <laughs> did you come from? it was like it, i could see in the like, video I, like, literally Rose. Like you couldn't process what was happening. It was like there was a glitch in the matrix where you were just like, hold on, but that's what's what happening? That's my response to anything. Like when I've had a traumatic experience before, uh -huh. or something scared me, I stay, I stand there. Just like frozen. <laughs> frozen. But I've realized it's a reaction to everything. Like I was, you could scream in my face and call me a million names and I will just stand there and stare at you like. Is this really happening? You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. Come on. All I don't right. know what I would do. I like I've always known of I've had two surprise parties and I knew about both of them before I went. So like I don't have a genuine moment of surprise where I don't think I've ever been like surprised by someone like that. So I don't know what I'd do. Probably start swinging. I think my fight or flight is fight. <laughs> I think mean, that's what I do. So I'm I the know. person that freezes when you yeah, always see you're that right in between. movies or stuff. I'm like, no, that's real because I do that. <laughs> yeah. I've been in a panic situation and I just froze. <laughs> and so USA Today bestselling author Cece Monroe spends her days working in her nights writing spicy romance novels that will leave you blushing during the steamy scenes and crying when romance gets a little angsty. Living in the snowy state of Utah with her husband and two sons, she enjoys reading, music, movies, and the outdoors. When she isn't writing or working, she is making people laugh with her mad sense of humor and tip of the tongue one-liners. Follow Cece for updates, new releases, and more. So I'll read you the book bio for the book we have the, today, The Guy from That One Summer. Left at the altar, I decide to drink my woes away on my supposed honeymoon in the Hamptons. When I arrive, I get caught by my ridiculously gorgeous neighbor, Finn, with my goodies on display after a spectacular face plant. I have no idea what I'm in for. A drink on the rocks with a little twist. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so cute. Um, I wanted to mention she has a new release coming up in May called Her Shadows, His Secrets. It's a plus size um, female main character. Uh, jealous possessive sex god um, with a, a splash of BDSM and let's see the, there is knife play blood and carving initial play she mentioned that I don't know I haven't read it I don't know that I've read many books like that before when you said that I've, I've read a few blood play but when uh -huh. you said carving initials my uh -huh. mind went to Mark Wahlberg. Yes, and fear. <laughs> Maybe it's a little chest. like that. Maybe it's a little like that. Um, there is praise and degradation and some stalking, which I love. The I female think that's lead. What it is. Now that you said carved initials. Mm -hmm. So I it's basically if... fear. Okay. <laughs> it's called Her Shadows, His Secrets. Um, the female lead really struggles with herself, her image, and body image. Um, she has a pre-order up called Arranged Deception. It's a mafia romance. It's available October 31st, so it's coming out on Halloween. There is a plus-size heroine, an arranged marriage, lots of banter and tension, a laundry list of triggers that you can see on her TikTok, but it all has the smutty goodness. Um, book your list. Oh, the book you're listening to today is a standalone. But if you like sexy insta love with smut and dirty talk, then this in this book. Then you'll love stuff from her backlist. Um, she's got a sign up for her newsletter. She'll be posting bonus chapters from all her books once a month. So make sure you do that. It's going to be down in the show notes. And her giveaway this week is a $20 Amazon gift card. So make sure you enter that too. All right. I think that's everything. I feel like that's a lot. But we're going to list it all in the show notes so you don't miss any of it. Um, let's send them to the first installment. All right. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. This is... The Guy from That One Summer.
by C.C. Monroe. Read for you by Stephanie K. Chapter 1 The Fallout and My Sexual Awakening That arrogant, glib, self-centered bastard. I gave it all up for him. My dream job, dream school, dream city, and even my damn orgasms. Yes, I spent three years with a man who could never get me to come. It was a chore for him, one that he couldn't manage to even attempt to master. So I mastered it myself as in masturbation. But where did that get me? Left at the altar in a $3,000 dress and a hundred sets of eyes looking at me, some with pity, others with shock, and one shithead teenager laughing. Which reminds me, I need to tell my aunt, Martha, that my cousin needs a nice slap to his acne-filled face. But back to the self-centered asshole, Damon. The man I gave it all up for, who got me to say yes, and when it was his turn to say I do, it looked like he'd seen a ghost, or even his grandmother naked and participating in nefarious activities. I shook him a bit, making sure he wasn't falling ill and about to be sick. Nope, he'd just been falling into some other woman's vagina for a while. He turned looked at some brunette with green eyes and breasts the size of my head, and told her, I can't marry her, I want you. Then he took her hand and ran off into the merry old sunset, with all but a white horse, like some Julia Roberts movie. And I was left standing there like I was in an episode of Punked. She's just a friend from high school, my ass. What an absolute prick. I hid my tears, my mother coming to wrap me up and walk me off the altar, and my father ran after Damon, screaming all sorts of obscenities. I just wanted a bottle of tequila to drown my woes and embarrassment in, and the actual glass bottle to take to Damon's head. How could he do this to me? I really thought we would have a life together. I wasted so much time with him. Do I love him? Yes, at one point. Sure, we didn't have all the physical chemistry, but we did care for one another, didn't we? I did, but clearly, he lost all love and respect for me. When damage control by my parents was in full gear, then the dust settled. I somehow lost the following 12 hours. And by the time I really process what happened, I'm now in my car, on my way to the Hamptons to stay at my parents' beach house. We were going to honeymoon here. Yeah, a honeymoon. One I should be on right now. But I'll be knee-deep in alcohol, while Damon is balls-deep in another woman and a new life without me. How could I have been so blind? I could have prevented this. When I realized I loved him but wasn't all head over heels, tripping blindly over all his charm, which, believe me, he once had, I lost being in love. But it doesn't give him the right to cheat or leave me at the altar. He could have saved us the money, embarrassment, and earth-shattering devastation if he would have just told me before we were moments away from putting a law-binding contract to one another. Now, in hindsight, I wonder, did I see this coming? Am I embarrassed or heartbroken or both? I don't know anymore. That afternoon at the church moved in slow motion. After the 100th call and millionth text, I swear, I turned off my phone, packed my shit, and got in my car. All I knew for sure was tequila, plus my parents' house in the Hamptons, equaled the only thing I wanted to do, period. Avoiding all songs that are remotely close to romantic, I blare hate music, rage songs. Songs that make you want to not only slap a man, but take his balls and grind them up in a blender. The imagery somehow brings me peace. 
How could he have been so cruel at our goddamn fucking wedding? If I were speaking my thoughts out loud, I'd say, excuse my language to the women who care so much about their appearance, they steam their dresses free of every wrinkle and wouldn't dare try anal. I'd try anal, I say aloud with a shrug. Yep, I need to drink. I'm starting to sound like a maniac fresh out of her straitjacket. When I pull up to the house, it's already dark out, and the only light is coming from my headlights. If there's a serial killer lurking in the bushes, it's all free range at this point. Have at it, sir, or miss. I don't discriminate. I will take either, just swimmingly. I turn off my car, open the back door, and grab my suitcase. I packed enough booze, swimsuits, and sundresses to get me through the week. But the amount of the tequila may be overkill, and I might be in over my head according to its weight. Plus, I have to wheel it through the sand, all the way up the driveway, and then the stairs. Can we say, fuck me? I start to make the trek, and just when I'm in the clear, heaving and panting with sweat dripping from my forehead, the front of my sandal folds over and I trip, falling face first into the still warm from the sun sand. My mouth becomes literal sandpaper. That was brutal, yet entertaining to watch. A thick, deep Australian accent comes from behind me, and I hurry to stand, riding my dress and throwing my long, curly brown hair over my shoulders. I don't need a mirror to know I'm absolutely covered in sand. But squaring my shoulders, I carry that fall with grace and what little dignity I have left. My pale blue eyes meet the tall, shadowy figure standing beside my car. Glad you enjoyed the show, creep. I can tell he's built from his shadow in the moonlight. So if he plans to take me, I might as well lay down and die. Wouldn't be the worst thing that's happened to me. You need some help? He ignores my rudeness, and I shake my head at his question, his rich accent making the spot between my legs damp. I can't even pretend the voice, the shadow, and the thrill of danger doesn't excite me. I'm only human. No, I would like to live, thanks. I already had a shit day and can't handle much more. I'll save getting axed by a stranger for another time. He laughs, and it comes from deep in his chest like a growl. And holy shit, I have to rub my legs together. That was incredibly sexy. I'm not Ted Bundy. I live next door. Well, I own it and visit. I was out for my nightly run when I got this show and a full view of your ass. I see him shrug and I blush, even more mortified. My dress must have flown up when I biffed it. Great. You couldn't have seen much. It's too dark out. I cross my arms and he starts to move closer, his face coming more into focus when my eyes adjust as he steps out of the shadows. Your pale skin in the moonlight showed me all I needed to see. He growls, and I step back. I will knee you in the balls, I warn, but he just laughs and moves suddenly, and I react, punching him right in the nose. He grumbles, fuck, and then straightens, and that's when I realize what I just did. He was reaching for my bag to help me, and I punched him. Hell of a right hook, Daisy. He shakes his head, and I tilt mine. Daisy? My name isn't Daisy, I tell him. I'm sorry, I just thought you were going in for the kill. Are you all right? My question is cautious, still heeding the fact that he could be a killer or criminal of some sort. No, but I can smell your scent from here. You smell like daisies. He puts his hand up in warning. I'm going to lean in and grab the bag, not attack you. We are good. His handsome face thick accent and the comment about my scent have me flustered. He may be the most attractive man I've ever laid eyes on. Suddenly, my body lights up, and I see a brief premonition of me being laid out on a kitchen counter, sweating and moaning loudly while he takes me in the heat of passion. 
Our skin slapping against one another's, the sound echoing, his grunts going straight to my core as I orgasm. Our bodies a mess of sweat, heavy breathing, and euphoria. I come out of it fast and shake my head. He's eyeing me suspiciously, but there is a sly grin I don't miss, and I feel like he just saw what I was seeing. Even though I know he couldn't have, I can't help but feel a bit scandalized by it. Words, Daisy. We good? I promise to not do anything you wouldn't want me to do. Wh- what? I choke out. Did he just say that? You heard me. My name's Finn. What's yours, gorgeous? He asks, and I stumble over my words, not sure what he meant other than exactly what he said. Oh, sorry, I'm Remy. Unique name, and for such a unique woman, he says, lifting the bag, and I would respond, but he beats me to it. Good heavens, what do you have in this thing? A dead body? And you think I'm the one to fear? How do I know I'm not your next victim? He starts to head to the house, and his questions make me laugh and feel a bit more at ease. But I won't let my guard down too much. He could flip in a blink. That's what all crazy people do. It's alcohol. I plan to be so drunk this week that I forget my own name. Feel free to join me. The end of my response is meant to be taken lightly. I don't really mean for him to come in and drink with me. But Finn, on the other hand, takes my words at face value. Sounds good to me. I stop in my tracks and look at him with narrowed eyes. Did he just invite himself in? No, not really. I was the one who said something about it first. Foot, meet mouth. Well, here we go. He looks at me and nods to the door. The door, Daisy? Remy, I tell him, and he smiles. The door, Remy? I could use a drink, and we need to figure out what makes a woman drive to the Hamptons at night with a suitcase filled with alcohol. Sounds entertaining. I scoff and push past him, trying to ignore the way his thick arm feels against my thinner one. He must be 6'4", and I'm only 5'5". It's a drastic difference. You know what? You seem to have taken my invite in the literal sense, and I was just joking. You thought that joke was going to end with me not wanting a drink? You offered, and I need details. Besides, Daisy, you look like you could use all the company you can get. I roll my eyes. I've never been in the company of such a cocky man before. Stuck up? Yes. Self-centered? Most definitely. But never this cocky and self-inserting. Or is it just confidence? You're just going to walk into someone's home, in the middle of the night, like some sociopath? I could be a crazy woman. Really? I thought I was the crazy one. I think I can handle you. He looks me up and down, and I gulp loudly. I'm sure he can hear it. Because the way he looks me up and down, like I'm a meal, is intimidating. Worrisome and, dare I say, exciting. Jaw is on the floor, babe. Pick it up and let's get a drink. He finds the switch and flips on the light, and that's when it happens. I am met with something better than I ever thought possible. A vision I couldn't have made up in my head. He looks like the guys in movies who would eat you alive and spit you out. He has a fresh tan, either from the sun we get here in the Hamptons or wherever he's visiting from, and his eyes are a stunning green. But his mouth, God, those lips, they are full and thick with a wall of white teeth behind them. He's tall with a lean yet muscular frame. His hair is short and a medium brown color. He looks like he walked out of an Armani commercial. You know the ones where they climb out of the water, get on some expensive yacht in outline-revealing shorts as they slick their wet hair back. Yeah, one of those men. An actual fucking dreamboat. He looks me over and appreciates what he sees too, and I'm not too naive to miss it. 
He stares at my face for a long moment, then slowly lets his eyes travel down the length of my body. I feel that perusal in every part of me, as if it's a physical being and hits all my major nerve points. Um, let's go to the kitchen, I say, but before we do that, he opens the suitcase and grabs a few different bottles. The wine and vodka I brought as backup, and my beloved tequila. I need to say something else, but those are the only words that find their way out. I just let a stranger in my house, and he's clearly enjoying the view. As am I. Which she obviously notices. And now I'm intimidated with a dash of anxiety-laced embarrassment. I get into gear, moving toward the kitchen, turning on lights as I go, hyper aware of the situation. Feeling him look at my backside, I would be lying if I said I didn't like it. And even while I'm freaking the hell out, I admit that, though I'm no seductress of any sort, I let my hips sway with more emphasis. I was just left at the altar, and there is a hot, godlike man in my house who has an Australian accent that could probably remove my panties by itself. No one is allowed to persecute me. So what is your drink of choice? I question, rounding the counter and facing him. God damn, that is a face I'd want to make a cozy yet orgasmic chair out of. Tequila, he answers, pulling the bar stool out and making himself at home. Finn is the embodiment of self-assured, a man without pause, and I envy it. I always try to throw caution to the wind, but then stop myself and think before I fall head first. What would it be like to feel so carefree, as if life is meant to be yours for the taking, risks be damned? Same. Straight? Iced? Margarita? I lean over and reach across the kitchen island to grab one of the tequila bottles we set out. Straight, and only a little bit. I don't want to get too drunk. Can't have you taken advantage of me, Remy. My eyes shoot up to him, and he has a sly grin splayed across his ridiculously handsome face. Speak for yourself. I'm the one at a disadvantage here. You could overpower me in seconds. I undo the cap, pour him a few sips worth, and pass it to him. Something tells me you can handle yourself just fine. Our eyes meet, and there is an edge to his, one that screams innuendos and lust. Really? And what makes you think that? I challenge, enjoying the banter. You know what I mean. Now, why don't you tell me what happened to make you drive here at night with enough alcohol to kill a horse? For a brief moment, I debate addressing his first remark, but decide against it. I'm lonely, vulnerable, emotional, and staring at a man who's made me horny as hell within minutes of meeting him. Let us not tempt ourselves anymore. I was dumped at the altar. Cheers. I lift my glass into the air then, his face stunned. But he meets me in the middle, our glasses clinking, and instead of shooting his drink, I'm left to do so by myself, as he watches me like some exhibited animal at the zoo. The burn of the tequila has my face bunching and eyes closing. When I open them, they water, but I can still see clearly and he hasn't moved. You okay? I ask. Fuck me, darling. Are you all right? He asks. I wave him off, but my insides are still burning from the shot and heartbreak, and I do a terrible job at faking I'm okay. I've had the worst day, but unloading on you, a stranger, isn't going to make it better. In fact, it just makes this whole situation even more pathetic. Pathetic? Remy, that is beyond messed up. What the hell was this bastard thinking? About some other woman and her magical vagina, I guess. I respond sarcastically, trying so very hard to hide my hurt. He left you for another woman? Yes, three years wasted on a man who left me behind like I was yesterday's garbage. I didn't even want to marry him in the first place. Finally, Finn takes a sip. Why didn't you want to marry him? Besides the obvious fact that he was a coward. As I shrug, a small giggle escapes me. 
it's not one of those hee-hee-how-cute giggles, but more so an incorrigible you're-asking-me type. I loved Damon. I did. But he and I were more like really good friends. Great roommates. And maybe that's what really hurts. The betrayal of a friend, maybe? I shrug again, pouring myself another shot. I don't blame you for hurting. So, you loved him. If he came here, would you take him back? My eyes shoot up to his and my head tilts as I eye him quizzically. What? He stands now, slowly rounding the island. Daisy, I asked, since you said you loved him, if you want him back. He growls this time, gaining on me. And suddenly, the knowledge that he's a complete stranger I just let into my house comes back with a vengeance, ringing bells and sounding whistles and alarms. Finn? I move back, my eyes darting around the kitchen for any sort of weapon I can use. Because those eyes are dark and honed in on me. There is an ominous yet intoxicated look in his eyes that has nothing to do with tequila. Oh my fuck, he's a killer. He's going to kill me right now. I got left at the altar and murdered all in one day. I'm 0 for 2. I must not be able to spot bad when it's literally staring me in the face. I'm not going to hurt you, baby. I'm going to numb your pain and make you forget it all. I gulp, hitting the kitchen counter along the wall. W what? I stutter, chills breaking out all over me, a tingle making its way from top to bottom of my spine. Listen. For any man to have you in his fucking hands and then be dumb enough to let those fucking curves slip from them, he's brain dead. You let me in here, and all I see is his loss. Finn- No, baby. We'll talk more later. But for now- He pauses, caging me in by putting his knuckles to the granite and his lips within inches of mine. I'm going to fuck you on every goddamn surface of this place and make you forget everyone before me. I moan. An actual moan slips from my lips and my knees buckle, but he catches me. You don't know me, I choke out. It's the best thing I can come up with. We just met a mere 30 minutes ago, and now he's telling me all the wicked things he wants to do to me to help me forget my ex. I mean, they do say the best thing is to get under someone to get over someone. Maybe having a one-night stand won't hurt. I'm pretty sure he would have killed me by now if he was going to hurt me that way. The achy, feel-you-for-days hurt wouldn't be so bad, though. Also, I've never even had my sexual awakening, my exploration of female pleasure. The patriarchy would call it hodum, while feminists call it a much-needed revolution. I deserve it. And what could one night of no strings attached do? What harm could follow? That's when something comes to me. This wild idea that I'll most likely regret and can't believe is happening to me in this very moment. On one condition, I tell him, finally squaring my shoulders and letting him know I'm not some meek woman. What's that, darling? His thick accent sounds so good. Film it. I want it recorded, and I want to send it to him when we're done. Remind him what he's missing. Put on a show, Finn. I challenge him with my eyes. Oh, I won't need to put on an act. I know the second I taste this cunt, I will be fucking whipped, baby. One night. That's all this is, Finn. I've never done this, so don't you dare think you can judge me. I put my finger in his face, pointing straight at him. Whatever you say, darling. No judgment here. Just a man waiting for you to make the first move so we can get this going. I'm done talking, Remy. Let me fucking taste you. We gaze into each other's eyes, and when a sense of trust takes me over, something in his expression giving me a mix of pleasure and conviction, I give in. I nod, and that's the end of our wait. He takes my face in his hands and devours my mouth, 
his tongue hitting mine, and it's a flavor that makes me drunk on him. Mint, tequila, and a man who knows what he's doing. Can that even be a taste? I moan, and he matches it with a deep groan from his chest. My hands land on his chest, and they are met with nothing but solid muscle, a wall of pure masculinity. Damon could never compare. Your camera, I want to remember this night. I separate from him, begrudgingly and with great power, but I do. I thought it was to make that prick see what he lost. He's cocky, his smirk tugging more to the left. Both. If just a kiss made me feel what it did, I want to see and remember the feel of you every time I touch myself. Oh, fuck me, you temptress of a woman. You are going to make me go mad. Welcome back. Welcome back, lady listeners. So that was the first installment of the guy from that one summer. Make sure you check out her upcoming releases and the pre-orders for her Shadows, His Secrets, and um, the Arranged Deception, which is the Mafia Romance as well. Um, and also, don't forget to sign up for her newsletter um, to get the bonus chapters from all of her books. And enter you know, this week's giveaway. That's it. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book, that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind and read.